Yo, 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 we got UFC 249 tonight. And when I tell you this card is stacked, I'm talking maybe best schedule card ever. Not even not even exaggerating. Not even exaggerating. So if you don't really watch UFC like that, you try to get into it. This is the one to start. And let's just thank the UFC as a sports community for bringing us something. I mean, we ain't got no NBA, we ain't got no football, we ain't got no tennis, no nothing. I mean, it wouldn't be football season regardless, but you you, you know what I'm saying. But yeah, let me get into these picks real quick. <clears throat> I'm going to start with the prelims because to be honest with you, even if the prelims was his own main card, that could at least be a fight night card. Maybe not a pay-per-view, but it's fight night worthy with the fights they got up on here. So yeah, let's check him out. We got Nico Price versus Vicente Luque to start things out. That's hard. That's hard. Um, Vicente Luque, he had a real close bout with Wonder Boy. His other fight we go. And if you know Wonder Boy, you know there ain't no easy task holding your own against him. And Nico Price, he just he just destructive. I'm talking about knock you out from anywhere on the mat. I done seen this man be mounted by somebody else. Somebody who's on top of him. And he knocked them out with punches off his back. And I done seen him knock somebody out with an up kick while, he, a up kick while he's laying down. So, I gotta go Nico Price. He just found weird ways to win. I mean... Vicente Luque, he is a tricky fighter on the feet. It's gonna be, I think it's gonna be hard for Nico Price to get him in the exchanges, but the dude just weird. He just different. He just be, it's crazy. Uriah Hall versus Jack Ray Souza actually got canceled, so we won't be seeing that. Hopefully, Jack Ray Souza gets well soon. He was diagnosed with the coronavirus. All the fighters getting tested, so they had to cancel that fight. So on to the next one, we got. Carla Esparza versus Michelle Watterson. That's another. That's another good. He's some good matchups, man. Uh, Carla Esparza, she got some good ground game, good wrestling. But Michelle Watterson, she just been looking real good lately. I mean, uh, she another fighter who lost her last fight, but I mean, it was against Joanna you know, Jacek, Jacek who just fell for the strap her like seventh time, and Michelle Watterson looked decent against Joanna. And. Yeah, I just feel like she got this new confidence these last few fights. You know, she done had a different swagger about her. So I'm going to go with Michelle Watterson. And then we got Fabricio Verdun versus Olenek. I don't know his first name. I ain't even going to lie to you. Um, I got Fabricio Verdun. I'm going to go with the veteran. I'm going to go with the former champ, Fabricio, on that one. By submission. I got, I'm going to take him by submission. And then to cap off the prelims, we got Donald Cowboy Cerrone and Anthony Pettis. Now, this is an interesting fight, man. Both fighters been shaky lately. They both former, you know, top five. Anthony Pettis, former champ. But they just, I don't know, they're so inconsistent. That's why this fight kind of perfect. They both vets. Both been inconsistent lately, but you know they both can bang. Hmm. I'm gonna go with Anthony Pettis. They fought before. He, you know, he won that last fight. And Cerrone, he coming off of a, a two back-to-back -back devastating losses, knockouts in the first round. So I gotta go with, I gotta go with Anthony Pettis on this. We got Greg Hardy versus De Castro. Ooh, heavyweight fight. Those are always hard to judge. I'm going to go with DeCastro, though. I just feel like he a little bit more seasoned, a little bit more, you know, just got a little bit more more in his arsenal. I feel Greg Hardy still kind of learned the ropes. It's kind of a high-level fight. But Greg Hardy, you know, he he's solid, though. Don't get me wrong. Working with American Top Team, one of the best um, camps in the game. So, but I'm still going with DeCastro on this one. We got Stevens versus Qatar. Man, I didn't even know that fight was on tonight. 
That's another nasty one. Both devastating uh, KO artist. Power hitters, you know, it's going to be a slugfest, man. These fights hard to call 50 50, but I'm more familiar with Stevens, so I'm going to put my trust in him. I'm going to go with Jeremy Stevens to take this one for sure. Let me get Francis and Ganu versus Rosen Strike. Oh, my goodness. Bruh. UFC, I did their sales with this fight. Like, you can stop the card right here, and I'm still watching. We ain't even get to the title fights yet, and I'm still watching. Both of these dudes is just so scary. Especially Francis and Ganu. Bar none, probably, probably the scariest dude on the planet. If you ask me who the scariest dude on the planet was right now, Probably I'd tell you friends think I knew. Off the top of my head. Can't think of nobody scarier. But Rosa Strike ain't no joke either. I done seen him knock somebody out moving backwards with a with a jab. You know how much power you gotta have to knock somebody out with a jab? Going backwards? This is gonna look like a nuclear war. Like two countries just dropping bombs back to back. But I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Francis on it. I'm gonna go with Francis. I'm not confident about the pick because I feel like whoever get hit first is going to lose. <laughs> whoever get punched in the face first is going to lose. But, I mean, I'm going to go with Francis. You know, he's just been on a roll. He, he, he really want that belt, too. He's been begging for another shot at the belt. So, I'm going to go with Francis. <clears throat> now for the title fights. We got Henry Cejudo. Triple C. Or his Dominic Cruz. Who some say, including myself, greatest bantamweight of all time fighting for the bantamweight title. Now, Dominic Cruz has been on a long layoff. Been injured for what feel about five years. It ain't really been that long, but I'm just saying. I, I feel like he always hurt because he usually is. But, hey, he done come off a long layoff before and knock dudes out. And then beat TJ Dillashaw after a long layoff for the strap. So, uh, it ain't no reason to doubt him. But Henry, man. And it's good to know. Henry also coming off an injury. Off a shoulder injury. But he just been on. I'm talking. I mean, he edged out Mighty Mouse in the close one. One of the GOATs. One of the greatest ever. Then he knocked out TJ Dillashaw. People say it was a close stoppage. But, I mean, a bad stoppage. But, I mean, if a dude land consecutive punches to you in the face 10 times in a row and you not doing nothing to fight back, I don't think that's a bad stoppage, personally. That's just me, though. That's just me. Hmm. And he just beat Marlon Marias, who is... Ooh, that boy. That boy nasty. Yeah, man, he been more active. I might be shooting myself in the foot with this prediction, but I just think Cejudo, if he just decides to... Because I don't think Dominic Cruz is going to knock him out. Like, I don't think Henry Cejudo got to worry about being knocked out. You know? Decision. I can see Dominic Cruz winning by a decision, but the thing about Henry is when he's losing, he's not afraid to just make it a dog fight and go after you. And I feel like if he do that, close the distance and just make it a rugged, tough fight, he can pull this off. So I'm going to go with Henry to retain. And now the main event. Justin Gaethje versus Tony Ferguson. Bro, I have never seen a matchup that just sounds so violent. I mean, my prediction for this fight is carnage. That's my prediction. <laughs> Forget talking about a winner. I, I predict blood. That's what I'm saying is going to happen, blood. Because, like, okay, Justin Gaethje, all his fights in the UFC... Either he got knocked out or his opponent done got knocked out. And Tony Ferguson done won 12 fights in a row in the lightweight division. That is... How you win 12 fights in a row in the best division in the UFC? That's great. And you done obliterated like all your opponents. Bloodied them up. Closed eye sockets. But Justin Gaethje be just knocking people out cold. I'm talking unconscious. Tony, he just the type to break your will and just make you want to give up. I feel like Tony got more in the arsenal, but Justin Gaethje, he a little bit more technical. 
I mean, don't get me wrong, he allowed himself to get hit, obviously, because he just be going. But he's been a little bit more calculated lately in his in his uh, decisions when fighting. And if he come in the way he been coming in, I can see him catching Tony. But will he clean his, you know what I'm saying? Will he clean his clock, though? Will he knock him out? Because every time Tony get knocked down, it's like he turned into a super saiyan. He just come back stronger than originally. Out of just pure respect and me not... I feel like Justin Gaethje normally is a bad matchup, but it's just so hard for me to bet against Tony Ferguson with the streak he's been on. So I'm going to go with Tony Ferguson, and that's going to round up my picks for tonight. Comment below letting me know who you think going to win. Prelims start at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Main card starts at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. So don't go saying I ain't tell you when, when the fight start. You ain't got no reason. Even if you just, you know, you ain't got the pay-per-view, you just want to watch the prelims. The prelims is a dang near great card in itself. And that's going to be on ESPN, you know, for the free ball, you know, if you got the cable. So, yeah, like I said, let me know what you think below, who going to win. And thanks for joining. You know, if you like these videos, you might as well just go ahead and subscribe. Hit the little bell so you know when the videos drop, you know, like all the YouTubers be saying. Peace out.